The Freestyle Libre 2 Plus is one of the latest sensors uh, in the CGM world, in the, in the world of the blood glucose meters, and I'm reviewing it today. The Libre 2 Plus is actually the follow-up model of the already existing Libre 2, which you, you, you might have used, so you might certainly have heard of it. And the Libre 2 Plus is now available in a number of countries, including the United States and uh, the United Kingdom. In the UK, it actually has been on the market for a few months. I think it was uh, mm, it, it's since June 2024. But, uh, but whether it's available to people with diabetes depends a little bit on the area where you live. Now, I tried out the Libre 2 Plus, and I will report, of course, my own experience with trying it out. Everybody is different, and if you try it, you might have a different experience with it. Over the years, I have tried many different sensors, including the Libre 2, actually. So I feel I'm in a good position to judge this sensor. Now, so what is new in this sensor? Well, the main difference actually of this sensor is that it lasts longer than the regular Libre 2. It lasts one day longer. It lasts 15 days, which means, you know, roughly you, have, you need only two sensors in a month. If you, if you assume there are 30 days. Well, yeah, one day you might say it's, it's not that much, but you know, off, off, on a whole year, um, I think it, it makes a difference. You use two fewer sensors. Otherwise, then that it lasts longer, I think it looks all the same, but maybe there are hidden improvements. And I think I ha might have discovered one hidden uh, improvement that I will mention later in the video. So uh, keep watching until the end. So, but otherwise, also important to note, so this sensor is exactly the same size as the Libre 2. The applicator and the inserter, that's all the same. It consists of two pieces still. And um, it also, it uses the same app that you would use for the Libre 2. So there are no changes there. Also interesting is how it connects to insulin pumps. And uh, I looked this up, uh, I was at a conference actually, and uh, the Omnipod 5 uh, representatives at the conference, they showed that the Omnipod 5 works together with the Libre 2 Plus. Now, in, if you're in the United States, uh, I think it's, it's slightly different. I think in the United States, um, it, I think the Omnipod 5 works with the G6 and G7, but maybe not with the Libre 2 1, uh, with the Libre 2 Plus. So it's slightly confusing. I think I, I have a link to the UK website where they explain this. I think it, it can be a little bit confusing, but I think this has to do with how these sensors are approved by whoever approves these things, by the medical authorities. Right, okay, so let's talk about adhesion. So and the physical sensor itself. As I said, it's the same size. And I generally would say the Libre 2 is quite a big sensor compared to say the Libre 3, and it's also bigger than the newest Dexcom models, such as the G7, which you have in the US, or the Dexcom One Plus, which you have in Europe. Uh, and of course, in Europe, you also have the G7. But anyway, that's a different story. We'll talk about the freestyle Libre here. Uh, but I will occasionally mention how it compares to the Dexcom sensors. But I noticed that the sensor, the Libre 2 Plus, stuck really well to my skin and that surprised me a little bit because in the past I used the Libre 2 and I often had the issue that, you know, after a while it would get a little bit loose and I used some adhesive uh, tape to actually make sure it, it, it wouldn't uh, fall off. Now, there are, uh, if it happens, there are of course these uh, third-party overlay patches, but I personally think that if a, a glucose sensor needs a third-party overlay patch to actually make it work, then, you know, maybe that, that's not ideal. By the way, Dexcom G7 and the Dexcom OnePlus, they come always with an overlay patch that you can choose to use. Uh, and, but Libre doesn't do that, and I think for Libre 2+, Plus, they don't need to 
at least not for me. I mean, it stuck really well to my arm. So that's a really positive thing. I want now, the accuracy of a glucose sensor, of course, is really important. And this is often expressed as the MART. That is the mean absolute relative difference between the blood tests and the glucose sensor values. So basically what you do is you subtract the two values that you measured at the same time and you divide it through the blood sugar, uh, the, the blood glucose level and then you multiply it by 100 and then you do that multiple times and then you average it, the, average, the, the absolute values and then you get a mark. Uh, you can, you should, if you calculate the mark, you should actually do this with, you know, laboratory blood tests. So to make sure that the blood test itself is really accurate. Now, I calculated myself uh, at home with my, you know, my home blood tests, which, you know, I don't know how accurate they are. But so let's first say the official mark of the Libre 2 Plus is, drum rolls, it is 8.2%, and that's very good. The lower the mark, the better, and this is very similar to what you see for the Libre 3 or for the Dexcom G7, Dexcom 1 Plus. Now, an ideal mark, of course, is 0%, but you probably never get that um, for, for various reasons, but 8.2% uh, is pretty good. Now, as I said, I calculated the mark myself and I, what I did, so I took over time, I, um, I did over, over the time, I think I did 17 uh, finger prick tests over the time that I had this uh, Libre 2 Plus sensor. And I saw, I, you know, I, I calculated what the difference was and then I could calculate my own mark. And I, I find it just sort of interesting to do because you know, ultimately you want to know how does the sensor actually work for me? And I did that. And um, one thing is that I had, uh, so of those 70 tests, I had four tests that, where I had a difference of more than 20%. For example, I had one blood glucose test of 9.7 millimole, which is 175 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, whereas the Libra actually said it was 7.8 or 140. And that is a difference of uh, actually 24%, which I think is considerable and they often they try to they often say you know we try to make uh, the difference be, we, you know, we strive to have the difference between the CGM and the blood test below 20% also what I had was that in in my case the Libre 2 always gave me a, a lower glucose value than my blood tests I don't, I don't know exactly why that is I mean as I said I mean it might be that my blood glucose meter is not so accurate or maybe the Libre 2 Plus was not accurate I mean you can't know if you do this at home but it's interesting that other sensor models of course they allow you to calibrate but the thing is if you calibrate it what do you calibrate it to maybe an inaccurate blood finger prick test so there is an issue with that as well so I understand that I can see that some of these companies say well you don't need to calibrate we have factory calibration and that's what Libra has. But so what was my mark? So my mark value uh, when I did it at home was 14.7%, you know, which is still reasonable, I think. But, you know, it, it's clearly higher than what they said it was. So, so which is interesting. But again, I mean, that doesn't, you know, you could argue that doesn't mean anything, but it is an interesting thing. Now I want to say a few things about the app itself. I must admit, I'm a very critical user of these apps and, uh, Honestly, I think this app has a couple of issues that are really not that good. They're so sort of like, I would say, annoying. First, this app does not show your blood glucose level, your glucose level, which is, you know, it's not literally your blood glucose, right? It's your interstitial glucose level, but it is, they use a unit that is related to blood glucose. It's basically an estimate of your blood glucose. But the thing is that when you use your phone, uh, you need to unlock your phone to actually get access to the Libre 2 app. Whereas uh, Dexcom and Medtronic, they have, have this actually on your locked screen, which is quite nice. So then you can just quickly you know, uh, turn on your phone with the button on the side. You don't need to unlock it. And you, and you, and you see there already in this notification area, you see what your blood glucose value is. Whereas with Libra, they don't do that. And I don't know why they don't do that. It, it, it should not be difficult for them to add that feature. Um, 
but I, that is something that I really missed. Okay. Second, uh, the second issue that I missed is that the alarms they don't repeat. That is, if you're too low or too high, you will get an alarm. But when it stays low or high for a certain time, you do not get a repeat alarm. Dexcom does this, and I, you know, and I probably some other. I, I can't remember other sensors, but you know, other sensors might do this as well. And I think it's really useful and it's a safe option as well because what if you miss an alarm for some reason or maybe you switched off really quickly because you were just, I don't know, you were doing something and, and you forget it because maybe it was borderline, you, you're not like uh, in a really bad state or something like that, but it was just going down. But it wouldn't, re the Libre 2 Plus wouldn't repeat, it wouldn't say, hey, remember, I told you it's low and it's still low. It would be nice if you could do that. And with, for example, Dexcom One Plus, I, which I reviewed on this channel, you can do that very, very precisely. So you can even say after how many minutes it should tell you again what your glucose level was. And I, again, this is sort of like the sort of features that are really helpful to manage your uh, diabetes, I think. I would also say this is more an issue for people with type 1 than type 2 because you use insulin. So... So that's something that I, I would like to mention. The third issue, I think, with the Libre 2, and also Libre 2, is that you cannot zoom into your curve of uh, of glucose data. They always show it, I think it's eight hours, and you, you cannot zoom in. And the nice thing, again, with other other apps, like, like including Dexcom, you can, sh you can show it for three hours. Now, if you're doing something, say for example, you just say, oh, I'm going hiking, and I just want to keep an eye on how it's actually dropping down. Now, if, if you have lots of data in, in relatively small screen, then that's quite difficult. But if you, if you see it for the last three hours, then you can keep track of that, and that's a nice thing to have. And they, they don't have it. I mean, and people, I mean, I've seen the comments on Google Play Store and so on. New version does the job, but it has issues, in my opinion. Logbook takes too long to load. It is painful to use. Main chart is now limited to eight hours and does not show the percentage of time in range for the last 24 hours as it did before. I miss that feature. No zoom or pan options in any plot. Adding this feature would be a massive improvement to the user experience. So they have never added that. And I think there are reasons why, and understandable reasons probably why these companies do not add features like this. And I'm, I have a different video about that. So, so watch it if you find it interesting. The fourth issue uh, is that in the, so they have a logbook, you know, which is good. Uh, I think it, it is nice to have a logbook. It helps, it, it can help you if you work with your doctor and you want that your doctor looks at your logbook, for example, it's nice, you, you could enter it for a certain period. You could say, well, for one week, I'm going to enter everything that I eat and the sport that I do and so on. But I think what is nice with some of the other sensors is that you can enter your blood glucose values, especially if you think, well, they're different for some reason, and that's important because, say, for example, your blood sugar on the CGM, it says it's low, but maybe it's not low with your blood test, and that's why you don't act uh, on it, you don't eat anything, so then, so you have a record of that. So you, it, so it's nice to enter those values, but the Libre Two wouldn't allow you to enter that, at least to the best of my knowledge. So those are four issues that that I found uh, were problematic. But I would say there are of course also good features of this app, and, and some features are probably are better than a Dexcom. Uh, for example. One thing is that they support a Novo Nordisk smart pen. So if you use a smart pen, yeah, you can hold the pen against your phone and then it scans the, you know, the latest uh, insulin doses, if, if that's something that you want. Um, personally, I, I think it's a nice feature that they have it. At the same time, I find that usually it's, it's actually quicker to quickly enter the number than... I also think that the statistics in regard to average blood glucose and so on are actually somewhat better presented than uh, on the Dexcom apps. They're, they're, they're good, but I, I like the way the Freestyle Libre presents this. I really should say that. Uh, I also like the way with you, know, you can, for example, look at the average daily uh, glucose curve and you can, can browse back through different days. And you say, okay, how was it in the last week? And you can look at every day and you 
to the best of my knowledge, you cannot do that with Dexcom. I, I tried to do it with the Dexcom One Plus that I reviewed uh, uh, not too long ago on this channel. So, so have a look at that, and, and you couldn't do that. So, so that's something where I can see actually that the Freestyle Libre Two Plus, the Libre Two, and the Libre Two Plus, and also the Libre Three. The, in that sense. The app, their app is somewhat better. What do you think uh, about what features are good and bad? I mean, if you like this sort of video, by the way, like and subscribe and make a comment about this below the video, right? Um, now, in summary, overall, I would say the Libre 2 Plus works reasonably well as a sensor. Now, all these sensors, they work reasonably well. So, um, what I would say is, you know, they haven't changed the size of the sensor, so it's still... I would say nowadays a relatively large sensor, given that that other sensors they are you know, sometimes somewhat smaller. Uh, the Libre 2 Plus is, oh, I think, very similar in size to the Medtronic Simplera, which I also have reviewed on this channel, which I think is a really good uh, sensor. Um, but the Dexcom sense, you know, the newest generation Dexcom, of course, is a smaller sensor. Um, the Libre 3 is considerably smaller. So, okay, so reasonably good sensor, but quite large. Um, I was really impressed with the better adhesion than previous versions of the Libre 2 that I've used in the past. Uh, that, that's a good thing. Now, I also, I know I'm a very critical reviewer when it comes to uh, apps. Uh, it's just how it is. But I actually think that some of the missing features on this app are... This should be annoying for most users. So, for example, being able to quickly see your glucose value uh, without unlocking your screen. I would like to know what your experience is. What do you think about this? Um, leave a comment below the video to share your experience so that people can make an informed decision about whether or not they go for this model. Now, most people probably don't have that much choice anyway. First of all, there are not that many sensors on the market and you're you know, restricted by your insurance and maybe with your medical team says. So that's a different story. So, but let me know what you think. I'm curious to hear your experience because you know we can learn from what other people find a problem or maybe how they solve that problem. So, okay. Now, thank you for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe.